February, Because of Mr. Tariff by Rob Bouvier. Peter, I ran into the classroom. Does everybody have their stuff? I yelled. Mr. Teeter, Mr. T looked up from his desk. Calm down, Peter, he said. Does everyone have their stuff? I said again, still excited. Calm down, Mr. T said again. Take a deep breath. I took a deep breath and then a normal voice. I said, does everyone have their stuff? I think so, Mr. T said. Let's go then, let's go, I said. We'll go out later, Peter. Besides, we need to take attendance and lunch count and listen to the morning announcements. Mr. T also figured if we went out and got soaking wet, first thing, we'd be miserable for the rest of the day. He had a good point, but I still wanted to get outside. We spent the morning spread out all over the place playing different games. I played categories with Mr. T, Luke, and Jeffrey. The letter B came up on the dice. We raced through putting down our ideas, and then it was time to share. We took turns going down the list, and then the item, things at the beach, came up. Jeffrey shared, then Luke, then Mr. T, and then it was my turn. And I leaned in, and I said, babes. Who brings babies to the beach, Luke said. Not babies, babes, Je Jeffrey said. I almost died. But wait, it gets better. Our very own brainiac, Luke, just sat there watching us laugh. And then he said, what do you mean? Can you believe that? He didn't know babes. I freaked. Holy smokes, I said. What rock are you living under? Mr. T jumped in at that point. Easy, Peter, Mr. T said. Lots of girls don't appreciate that term. It sounds as if you don't respect them. And part of being a man is knowing how to respect a woman. Oh, Luke said, girls. His light bulb had suddenly turned on. Mr. T looked at me and smiled, shaking his head. Mr. T's the best, I thought. That was the last time I got to hang out with him. Luke. Peter thought he was so smart all of a sudden. He won a homework pass off a lucky guess and he confused me in categories. Big deal. I resolved, dollar word, to get him. Jeffrey. Never thought I'd play a game with my teacher, but I did. I played categories with Terrupt and Luke and Peter, and I learned that I'm even smarter than Luke at some things. Oh, but that doesn't make him out to be a bad kid, just a dork. As smart as he is, Luke doesn't make a stink about it. I like him for that. But Peter, sometimes he gets on my nerves. He's always doing stuff and never gets in trouble. I knew he was just waiting to get outside. I had a surprise for him. It would have been better if I'd never gotten involved. If I just stayed hating school, none of this would have happened. Peter, finally, we were outside. The snow was perfect, the kind that packed and formed super snowballs. I scooped up a handful as we walked toward the field, squeezing it over the, and over. No snowballs, Mr. T had told us before coming out. We reached the corner and I stuffed the snowball in my pocket. It was too perfect to just toss down. It wasn't like I was going to throw it. I ran out into the untouched field. The field was perfect too. There was a mountain of snow right in the middle that we climbed up. I was already standing at the top when I saw Lexi making her way up the side. I thought about how she'd been really quiet lately, like she was down in the dumps. Maybe that was why I thought knocking her into the snow would snap her out of her trance. Without thinking it through, sometimes I never do anyway, I slid down the side and gave her a little shove. She tumbled backward. I laughed hard. She didn't. I ran toward a smaller mound of snow. That was how the game started. Everyone joined in, running back and forth between the two mounds. We knocked each other down as we ran and we wrestled each other off the tops. I'm not sure how it happened, but somehow I got knocked down. I was watching out for Lexi when somebody shoulder checked me from behind. I fell off the mountain and landed on my belly. Lexi came running over and kicked snow in my face. I was fuming. It was one thing to knock each other down, but kicking snow in someone's face, that's just wrong. I was angry. I got on my knees and bam, I got knocked down on my face again. Now I was fuming and steaming. I pushed myself up to see who did it when bam, 
Same thing happened. This time, the person held my face down, too. I was so mad. I jumped up, pulled that snowball out of my pocket, and chucked it for all it was worth. Act 8, Scene 1. You could hear our big, heavy snow boots thumping down the sidewalk until we turned the corner and dashed out onto the field. A monstrous hill of snow loomed right in the middle. Naturally, we all sprinted toward it and clambered to the top. And then we jumped, taking the plunge into waist-deep, powdery white. It didn't take long before the boys started talking each other, taking each other down. Peter seized the opportunity and sent Alexia flying down the side of the mountain. She landed on her back, all splayed out. Peter laughed and ran. Alexia sat up, and I could tell how mad she was by the lines in her contorted face. Suddenly, I thought of a way to get Peter. Yeah, he wouldn't expect me. He'd be keeping his eyes on Alexia, expecting her to retaliate. I collared Danielle and Anna. Here's what we're going to do, I said. It wasn't a suggestion. More like I simply told them how my ingenious plan would be executed. Act 8. Scene two, we hid behind the mountain of snow. Peter came running toward us and scampered right up the side. While Peter stood on top like the king of all dorks, we snuck up the back side of the hill. Danielle threw her shoulder into Peter, knocking him off balance. He wavered. I blasted him with my shoulder coming from the opposite direction. Anna gave the last little nudge from behind. The one, two, three punch was too much for Peter to handle. He squawked like a dying seagull as he flailed through the air, landing face down. Alexia ran over and kicked snow in his face the instant he picked his head up. Danielle and Anna and I just reached the other mound when he turned around and saw Peter fire the snowball. Luke. Alexia knocked snow in Peter's face. He griped and whined as he sat up to wipe the snow from his eyes. Let's get him, Luke, Stir Jeffrey said. I felt like a couple of snipers, dollar word, sizing up our target. Jeffrey slid down the smaller mound, hurried across the snow, and shoved Peter's face back into the white powder. Peter never saw it coming, and Jeffrey was long gone by the time Peter sat up to wipe his face again, and that was when I attacked. I blasted him from behind, knocking him down, and held his face in the snow extra long. This reversal, dollar word, of typical roles, with me being the victor, felt awesome. It was one of the greatest upsets, dollar word, of all time. My victory celebration lasted only a second before everything was shattered, dollar word. Jeffrey, Peter had it coming. I got him good, and so did Lukester. They say all's fair in war. Peter's not a crybaby but all of us ganging up on him was too much. He got crazy upset and chucked that ice ball. Anna, I didn't want anyone to get hurt. Danielle, why did I go along with Jessica's plan? I could have said no. I should have said no. It was supposed to be fun. We were all getting pushed into the snow. Peter would have knocked any of us down. He's always fooling around. It was supposed to be funny. How could it turn out so bad? Jessica, Act 8, Scene 3. I don't think any of us were malicious in our attacks on Peter. It was the sudden onslaught that made him throw that snowball. We didn't know, and I started it. Luke, I was running away from Peter, so I didn't actually see it. I saw something else. The twisted, dollar word, faces of Danielle and Anna and Jessica. Peter, I didn't know Mr. T was gonna be right there. Danielle, Mr. Terrup stood up right in the way. Jessica, 
I still remember Alexia's scream, piercing, horrified. Peter, I didn't want to hurt anyone. Luke, Mr. Terrup should have stopped us. He let us go too far. Peter, I wish I could take it back. I didn't mean to throw it. Anna, please let my teacher be okay. Danielle, dear God, it's Danielle. I really need you down here. Mr. Terrup needs you.